Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So I'm back with an update on my uh, my truck box power station for off grid. Um, I kind of showed it in a video back in in mid March. I was taking some uh, devices that I've reviewed over the years or had installed in the RV, and they've kind of become redundant. I have them kind of spare now. So I thought it'd be interesting to put myself together a a truck a toolbox power station mainly so I can keep testing devices for longer term testing and also I thought it'd be kind of handy to have especially when we're off grid and we're camped um, under trees and things I could take the truck and while I'm driving the truck I could be charging up batteries and then uh, using that power when we're boondocking so I had a project uh, part one video where I just roughed in wiring and kind of tested it for you now I'm back. I've uh, now that we're back uh, for the summer in a stationary place. I've been kind of puttering in the last week or two, setting it all up and uh, finishing it off. So I'll give you a look at the the block diagram here of it. Um, there is the solar panels here. I just have one 100 watt on the toolbox, so it's always charging. Because um, normally all I, I have coming out of this system is I'm supplying. Um, power for my dash cams. Um, I have parking monitors that run 24-7 and I have about six or seven cameras that kind of monitor around the truck. So they use, you know, an amp or so. So this 100 watt puts enough power back into that to keep everything kind of equal. But I can um, add more panels to that because I have a 40 amp solar charger that I'm using. So I could, you know, I could put about 500 or 600 watts of panels here, kind of a ground array if need be. So that charger um, goes and charges this uh, 400 amp hour battery bank. There's a couple 200 amp hour ampere time batteries and they're the self heating variety. So that's the, the main power center in there. Um, I also have a way to charge them via shore power. I have a 30 amp AC charger that I reviewed a, a couple months back. So I'm using that as shore power charging. Um, I also have a 40 amp DC to DC charger that I've used for a few years, a Renogy. Um, I'm currently testing out an SRNE DC to DC charger in the RV, so this became spare. So I've wired that in, so I can use a truck alternator through that to charge at 40 amps. The lithium bank. Now for an AC power, I have a 1500 watt inverter that I reviewed back in the winter. So I, it's an L. It's called Alpha. And I've installed that and put an AC outlet so that I can plug things in like a vacuum cleaner or, or tools and things like that. But also it's a way that I can transfer power out of the battery bank into the batteries in my RV. Say it's there sitting under trees somewhere, not getting much power. I take the truck for a few hours, pick up groceries or whatever I'm doing. This is kind of charged up. I could go back and plug my... my uh, converter charger in my RV into this and transfer the power over like there'd be losses in the the transformation but at least it's a way to to get power back into my RV um, there's also a battery monitor here it's a, a called a junk tech battery monitor um, it has its own display and also an app that you can use so I can use the app without even looking at the display to see what's going on with wattage and amperage and battery capacity so there's a little shunt that had to be installed there um, and also for this charger i've installed a switch near my seat so i can if this is all plugged in i can i can turn that on and off from inside the cab of the truck and then there's also the wire that goes the powers the parking mode so you can kind of see the block diagram and the flow positive power dc power is the red and the negative is the the black wires so let's take you out and show you it all in real life and give you a demo of it so here we go it starts with a solar panel that's mar mounted on top of this toolbox it's a plastic toolbox i've had for a while and there's the two batteries both amper time self-heating batteries so if it gets too cold it won't damage the cells. There's heating pads in there that I can apply power to and they'll warm the batteries up so that they, they can safely charge and discharge. Then I've got a Bouge RV 40 amp solar controller there. And that's the wire that's coming in from that solar panel on top. 
Um, it's just a 100 watt solar panel, but I can add to it um, with ground panels. And I've got myself a, an extra cable to hook up if I want to deploy some ground panels to increase the solar power that can come in here. Uh, the other charging option is the DC to DC charger, or energy 40 amp. So it's just mounted on top of there. I just screwed it into the top of this battery. I know from taking this battery apart, there's about at least that much free space below before you get into anything. So just popped a few uh, half inch screws in there just to keep it in place. This is just screwed to the box. And then over there we have an Alpha 1500 watt pure sign inverter just mounted against the box as well. And then over on the side there I have a, a plug, outdoor plug. On the other side it's got a flap that opens so I can plug in 110 devices there. Another charging option is this uh, Tornado 30,000 Top Don charger and it has a lithium 30 amp mode so um, if I want to, if the batteries are running low and I'm at an RV park or something, I can just plug this in and it'll charge the batteries. So I can do it from AC power, off the truck's alternator, or solar. For uh, monitoring the batteries, they don't have Bluetooth in them. So I've got a uh, battery monitor system that uses a shunt. You can see it has a case here. It's one of those junk tech units. So there's the shunt. So I have all the negative on one side of all these devices and then it goes straight into the, the batteries which are wired in parallel. There's its controller box. I've just screwed that down over there. Then on the side here I've mounted it's got a display so I cut a hole in the box and mounted it. It's got a waterproof front on it. So I've mounted it there and then it also has an app that I can view remotely. Um, as far as fusing goes, I have right off the, the um, main positive terminal here, 175 uh, amp terminal fuse. And that's just protecting all these, all these red wires here in case something shorts as far as the inverter or the, or the charger wire. It also has its own 40 amp fuse there. So it just protects all the wiring. Other protection I have for this over here, it's getting powered through here, and I have a fuse holder there. It's got a couple amp fuse. Over here, the wire that goes, there's a, a parking mode on my dash cams, and it needs a constant 12 volts. So that's just a little two amp fuse or something there to protect the wire that's going to it. Okay, I got one other protection. Oh, there's a trigger wire here. You see this red wire. So to turn this on and off, so that I don't, you know, run my batteries down, it goes into my cab. I'll show you. I mounted a switch near my seat, and then it also has a fuse to protect this wire. It's like a two amp fuse. This I just have pulled out here. I'm going to put it back in and show you how it's going to be mounted in place. And we'll uh, show you how I have the input for here is right here. And I've got kind of a stuff that's used in semi trucks. I think it's about a 100 amp plug there, waterproof plug. So I just have, I drilled a hole in the box there and mounted it. And then I put the input there that's going to come from the alternator. Uh, let's uh, demo some of the hookups. So I've just plugged into my camper here. We're on shore, shore power. Let's put an extension cord in there. And right now I'm charging with that little uh, charger, the AC charger in there. I've turned on the inverter. Just test with a shop vac. That's nice. Nice. I can vacuum out the truck off-grid anywhere I am run power products Just show you the display here just have it tucked right down here and I can just push a button and then I can see what's going on in there voltage current 
wattage used, all that sort of thing, capacity left. And the solar panel is putting in power through that charger. Now I'll show you my hookup for the DC to DC charger. So this port here, I had installed when I had that DC to DC charger in my camper. And it's got, uh, you know, those power pole connectors and it's wired to the battery. The battery has a, uh, gets a 60 amp fuse on it to protect the wiring down to here. Also has a, a switch that I can switch it on and off. Anyway, it gets, it gets the alternator or the truck battery power back to here. And I've just made up this cable out of old jumper cables, cut them, added the connector here. And I'll just show you inside what I've done with that kind of trucker's connector, DC connector. So it just goes into there like that. Nice kind of weatherproof that they use on big rigs. So I just have to, if I want to use that, I just have to click it into there. And I can drive the truck around and put 40 amps of juice into it. I'll just demo that. So I just installed a little switch down here. See that red light comes on. So it's connected to actually the power coming out of my lighter socket. So even if I was to forget to turn that switch on and off, when the truck turns off, this turns off within about 20 seconds. So that way I wouldn't be draining my batteries with the DC to DC charger. But I kind of like to have the switch as well. So I put the switch in. So when I turn that switch on, the, the trigger wire is wound down under the RV or under the truck. And then it pops up here into the box. And we'll just check here, and you can see I'm charging 40 or 39 amps there. Cool. And when I don't want to use it, turn that switch off. A couple other things. So I mounted this piece on some wood put some hinges there that way it's kind of above everything else and kind of blocks all that critical connections down there but I can also lift that up and get at things all my wiring gets put in there then I have a blanket that sits in there kind of keeps it in place show you on the side here that's the connections for the AC output and then it also does have a temperature probe. The battery monitor has a temperature probe, so I have that just tucked down here. That way I can keep an eye on the, the temperature in the box. I think it's gonna be okay. Um, there is a bit of airflow, because down in the corners here, I had to cut out the box so it fit on my hitch legs on both sides here. So there is a little bit of air that can go through there and it doesn't get too hot in there but if it did I may have to put in an exhaust fan I'll just see how it goes I don't really hang around in really hot hot temperatures and also the solar panel kind of shades things as well anyway that's it truck toolbox power center all completed be a nice thing to have till next time Ray from Love Your RV any questions leave them in the comments cheers guys